I am Gula Log and this is my review show. My dog's looking at me funny. Yeah, now you can see my dog too. Isn't she cute? Isn't she cute? Hi, George. <laughs> okay, let's not do that. So, what is this review going to be about? Well, it's probably going to be mostly my dog being cute because. Anyway, eh, I have ADD. What the show? As I was saying earlier, I have ADD. I also have anxiety, and my dog just left me, which makes me sad. And I thought, while well, unloading the dishwasher, which is strangely when I usually get most of my ideas, I don't really know why. But I was thinking I could do a review of things that involve mentally disabled people. Because that's just fun. I'm probably going to change the format of, or the setting, or the something, whatever, of this show because I realize that sitting on the floor in front of that, probably not the most interesting, well, it could be interesting, but it's not the best or most professional looking setting, but whatever. I have Legos. And maybe someday I'll change from recording this on my computer to using my actual camera. And, uh. And I'm making it look better and all that stuff. Because. Well. Can you tell I have ADD? Because I do. I have ADD. Did you know that? Have I mentioned that yet? I have ADD. Hi, Juno. Are you panting? And on that note, I do not like how mentally disabled are represented in today's media. Or past media, but let's face it. Today's media is a lot better than it was in the past, so let's focus on today, because everything can still be improved. Now, I kind of started this on a whim, like, you know, the whole dishwasher or whatever thing. I think it was the dishwasher. So, I don't exactly have anything particular in mind for this first review, so I'll just go over shows that stick out in my mind as having, or other things in media, not necessarily just shows, but as having, I don't know, what I think of them and their representation of whatever thing they did. First, let's go to that one episode of The Simpsons where Bart Simpson is diagnosed with ADD and he gets the drugs and then he goes crazy and mental and whatever and blah 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 blah. I'm on medication for ADD. It's worn off by now because it's 8.45 and uh, yeah, so you can probably tell if I kept coherent sentences or anything, but ADD meds help me, like really. I go from my mind wandering and not being able to focus and uh, going from thing to thing like, ah, you need to do this, you need to do this. And if it, it's so overwhelming when I'm not on meds that I end up usually not doing anything. But when I'm on meds, I'm like, ah, you need to do this, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, and then I'll do this, and then I'll do five billion other things, and I may not be able to get one thing done, but, is that not a person? Also, I just heard a dog in front of me. Ooh. Thanks, Journal. Um, anyway, 
I might not be able to finish one thing, but I'll at least make progress on several things. Whereas when I'm not, um, I may that I'll just be like, ah, I need to do so many things. Ah, don't want to do anything. Too much to do, too much to think. I'll just go and play Facebook games, like, yeah, for like ever. Or Sim Farm. I started playing Sim Farm again, it's fun. But, more or less, that one episode of The Simpsons, and that one episode of King of the Hill, where Bobby gets diagnosed with ADHD, and the way they do it is like, oh gee, you might have ADD, and that's all they do. And then, um, they put him on drugs, and then he's like, bad on the drugs and all that stuff. Whereas, it's kind of hard to get drugs for ADD. You have to pretty much prove it. And while there are some cases of misdiagnosis or diagnosing where there's nothing to be diagnosed, it's actually fairly accurate the way they diagnose and not diagnose and whatever. And it's kind of sad because the meds that work for ADD, at least the ones that I'm on, which is Adderall, are ones that other people use to get like high and fake or whatever we call it. I'm not into drugs, so I don't know any of the drug terminology. These are my drugs. I'm not gonna get one of those. I don't need those. It is ridiculously hard to, one, get a prescription for Adderall, two, pick up that prescription, three, keep getting that prescription month after month after month after month, because ADD does not go away that easily. You can improve the symptoms, but you cannot just get rid of it. And Adderall is only, I don't know, the effects of the meds generally last like 12 hours or something. It's annoying, because you have to do all this stuff, because you have to go to the doctor and they have to do the prescription again and again and again, and you have to go through all these steps, really expensive. Some people like to take it when they don't necessarily need it because they want to get high or whatever. I don't remember what it's called. Stoned. Whatever. And of course when there's that many steps and you have ADD, you're not as likely to get it done because I goes. Or hello. And there's also this big thing about over-medicating kids, and do they really need all this help, or are we just making up disabilities for kids who are just stupid and need to apply, apply themselves better, and blah 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 blah. I have meds. Wait. I have issues and I need meds. I mean, I could go without them, but really... Well, there are a lot less blank pauses and empty stares when I'm on the meds. Some people might think it's the other way around, but I'm pretty sure because I took them this morning at like between 8.30 and 9 or so. I'm pretty sure they've worn off by now. Thing is, yeah. My boots are distracting me. Make me look fat when I make boots. Okay, back to work. I'm gonna hide my boots. My legs! Yeah, thing is, meds aren't good for everybody. Big shock. They don't work for everybody. Sometimes therapy and uh, those things that you get, um, accommodations. Sometimes those are the best things for someone with ADD. Sometimes you don't need treatment at all. Sometimes you can manage it on your own. You know what? Don't make blanket judgments on me. I need my meds. I'm sounding like an addict right now. So, yeah, those are the two shows I can think of that have things with ADD that's just like, come on, really? I mean, ADD is enough of a joke as it is. I really have to make it even more of a joke? I'm not a punchline. Except where I want to be. Like right now. Let's, let's bring Dusty. Let's bring Dusty Storage in here. He's not coming in lately. I'm not going to do that. I think I'm gonna wash my legs soon. Because that's what I do. I like my things to be clean. Even though it doesn't look like it, but that's the overwhelming part of the ADD thing. And that I have to work and stuff. But it's actually a lot cleaner here than it usually is. Watch 
actually don't have as many body issues or self-image issues with the legs and stuff like this. Wait, I should be really sad if I'm not there. So I could do like this and then okay. But this is uncomfortable. I don't want to draw that much attention. You know, that's what I'm doing right now. So other shows. Monk is a good one. Uh it's good because well it's a good example. I love that show, it's funny. I like Monk. He's I don't know, he's endearing to me. So aw. I do some of that too. Except not really, but I have different things that I and so I can relate. And he has his moments where he's like he he shows a sense of humor and his like uh other stuff and so yeah, and I like him. But at the same time, it has its flaws, like it focusing mostly on his OCD. It's a rather um 2D view of OCD. Yeah, it doesn't really um capture how broad and complicated it is. Because surprisingly, well, for most people, it's surprising to learn that ADD and OCD is a pretty common mix. I'm pretty sure that's what I have. So yeah, there's Monk. Um, let's see, there's Mercury Rising, which is about the autistic kid, and then there's that one episode of House, which is about that autistic kid. And I can't really say a whole lot about those because I'm not autistic, but I've talked to a lot of autistic people, and I think it's pretty obvious that that's pretty one-sided, or one showing one. Showing one that it's not really accurate for everyone. So I should say. Maybe the more extreme cases, but not everyone. And then there's Autism Speaks, which is just terrible and needs to go die on the fire or something. But now I've talked. And there's countless crime series. CSI, which I love, um, tends to. Um, yes, I love CSI. If you don't like that, if you try to argue with me, I'm just gonna be like, come on, dude. Yes, I don't care about its flaws. It has more humor. I love it. But yeah, I actually do care about its flaws. I still love it, but I don't like it. The flaws. It has a lot of room for improvement. I haven't actually watched it since um, my sophomore year in college, I think. Yeah, that's when I stopped having TV and stuff. But yeah, they they like to do that whole if you're mentally disabled, you're probably a serial killer. Ah. Kill your family. Just commit suicide. Do everything. Why am I being dramatic? Anna Jams. They're all over the place, really. People just making the weirdest assumptions about the crazies. Um, and we really need to stop doing that. I mean, granted, a few cases of like mentally ill and stuff happening because of that, like, bad stuff and all that. Yeah, we, we could really tone it down a little, or a lot. Like, really, really, really a lot. One in four characters that are mentally disabled on television or in the media tend to end up killing somebody or hurting somebody. And about half of them aren't going to end up getting hurt. So I'm pretty sure I haven't killed anybody, and... Well, I mean, I guess you could count all the emotional pain that I've endured over the years because of having anxiety that's not diagnosed. And so generally, what I've discovered is that there's nothing that throws people off more than someone who's mentally disabled and is very self-aware and jokes about it. And points it at people's faces and makes them feel very uncomfortable about it. Do you feel uncomfortable? Kill you! Okay, I don't normally put my face that close to people when I'm making jokes about my disorder. They're pink! They're pink! So yeah, that's all I can think about right now. And I want to keep it relatively short so I don't get lazy halfway through editing and be like, Oh, I'll do it later, and then it never gets done. And it's like a month later, I'm like, Oh yeah, I did that thing. But I don't do anything, and then it's like a year, and I'm like, Hmm.
Maybe I should just give up on that project that I haven't worked on in it over a year. So, yeah, I'm gonna keep it short. Even though it doesn't seem like I'm doing that right now because I have to still talk. But yeah, so this is my first one, so I didn't really have any themes to go on or anything. I'll probably do stuff that's not specifically like representing disabled people. I might go into physical disabilities. But I wanna stick with what I know, so I'm gonna stick with hidden disabilities, which are the ones that aren't necessarily obvious and that well, one, that you can't tell just by looking at somebody, and two, you can't tell just by talking with them for like 10 minutes. So, the, like, one of the ones that I have, because somehow my diagnosis of anxiety didn't happen until I was in college. I'm afraid of everyone and everything that moves. I'm afraid of you. I'm probably going to spend tonight wondering how badly you're going to judge me. I love you people. I love you people. But yeah, once I have, um, some specific, I'll probably look for specific things that uh, can go into more depth on what I mentioned. I'm gonna start using my actual little camera, my video camera, so that you don't have to listen to my computer overheating all the time. I'm gonna get a better setup. At least that's what I plan on doing right now. Hopefully, I can stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. Let's stick with it. Um, so, yeah. We'll see where it goes from here. I have ADD, you can tell.